Hi guys, I'm Pronobus, and this is a lightning quick introduction to Foundry version 0.3 for the player's viewpoint. This is designed to get you up and running as a player as quick as possible. So probably if you're brand new and have never played before, your game master will have characters already and for you to go code it out. Character creation right now is a bit clunky, but they're all pre-made available on my Patreon and that's what we're using for today. So, they may even ask you to go over to the Compendium, which is this little floppy disk drive over here. And in here, any of those folders show any of the 51 different pre-made characters available there. And you can click into them, you can read them, but if you right click on them, there's no drop down here. Only the Game Master can actually upload them for you. We'll get into that for the Game Master video. For now, we are this Berserker Barbarian. So let's pretend temporarily that we are in combat. We're going to pretend that we are going over to attack the life cleric down here. Now the poor life cleric doesn't know that he's about to be betrayed. So as a berserker barbarian, we need to get into melee range. We can either click and drag, or we can hold control and click and then hit spacebar. And this is useful because whenever you click while doing this, you leave a waypoint that allows you to move fun patterns. Or you can just use the arrow keys or the number keys on the numpad which gives you your 1, 3, 7, and 9 to move diagonally. So once you're over within range, you double click on your character to open your character sheet. We can see that if we need to make a strength check to push them over, the ability test is just that easy and it asks us are there any special situational bonuses are we raging per chance? Because we'd get advantage to strength checks when we're raging. And it rolls there, and if we click on it, it shows where it dropped. If we need to know anything more about our class, we can read the entire summary down in here. It even gets down into your abilities and what does your archetype give you. The race, which is down a bit further, and the background is cropped off here, but if you have a better screen resolution, you'll be able to see the background information right below that. And of course, the half orc has no sub races, so that is blank intentionally. So we want to make that attack we were talking about. We're here, all weapons. We're going to swing that great axe. And we come over to the chat and we roll damage attack. And assuming the 13 hits because it's. Uh, Spellcaster, we could roll damage there. That being said, we cannot apply the damage to someone else. However, with that orange box around us, we can apply damage to ourselves. So we can right click on this. If it was if it was them attacking us, it might be on our responsibility to keep track of the damage. And remember, since we're raging, we're gonna take half damage because we're resistant to melee attacks. So it's relatively easy to use those things. This hide button on top won't do anything from our viewpoint because that's for the game master to hide tokens to jump out and sneak up on us. This middle token allows us to apply special effects. So if we want to mark that we were raging, we could choose whichever of these we think best describes rage. I don't know which one that'd be. And that'd give a little icon for everyone to know. The bomb button is what the game master used to put us into combat, so that doesn't matter. If we click and hold on our token, it shows us our current health and allows us to edit it right here. And of course, if we go straight through the roof, it won't actually, oh, it did go straight through the roof. <laughs> Let's bring that back down. Okay. And it also gives us over here a marker, and this is going to be your elevation marker. So if we wanted to say, I'm standing on top of the life cleric's head, and he happens to be seven feet tall. We can mark it like that, and it just gives a nice, easy place to see that. Now, we won't get that information from anyone else, but the game master will. Let's say, ah, this is great and all, but I didn't want to take that gray axe. It may be the default, but I want it, and we're going to come over to the compendium and scroll down to the equipment. And I'm going to open up the class again so we can see what his options were. It says right in here, stone equipment. One martial weapon, typically a great axe. Okay. 
Uh, so, with that being the case, any martial weapon. Well, a long sword is also a martial weapon, I believe. So, if we click on it, it's going to say there's also a martial melee weapon. Excellent. So, if I drag that long sword over and drop it in, I now have a long sword ready to go and attack. If we have decided to be a level 4 that is dipping into a spellcaster. I've stuck the various classes over here. And so we could choose whether we're being dropping a little bit into druid. I know, my wisdom is not high enough to do this. This is totally illegal. But this is how you would do it. And again, I can't scroll down far enough in the screen to see that though. But it is now down there. And we also get the level 1 druid abilities which are going to go into our feet section at the bottom. And we can see Druidic coming in there. So if we wanted to read these, we could. We could also click on the image to drop them in the chat, to share them with our friends, discuss what's going on. And with that comes spell casting. So as a Druid, And I can look it up in here, and we have the spellcasting ritual, wisdom based. So he's gonna be really bad. This is not a druid barbarian, is not what you should build. But up here at cantrips, two cantrips known. So we're going to come over here and go to our spell browser. And we need class. Druid level cantrip. So we get two of these, and it's pointless for us to take poison spray or produce fire because with a minus one, they have a DC of seven or an attack of minus one. No, attack of plus ones because it has proficiency as well. So that's pointless for us to do, but let's grab guidance and druid craft. And then spell-wise, we prepare spells. Hmm. I forget exactly what it says in here. Oh, preparing and casting spells. There we go. And sometimes it takes some scrolling up and down to find it. Although now that I'm thinking, it probably has that right there. <laughs> so I could have just looked at it right here without doing all of that searching. Okay. Preparing and casting. Minimum one spell. Wisdom plus druid level. So zero minimum one. So we do get one level, one forced level spell. And we're going to take... Cure wounds because, well, I feel like I'm gonna need it as a barbarian who's decided to dip. <laughs> okay, and so if I were to roll this, it'd allow me to roll healing. <clears throat> it'd be very sad that I'm not actually going to be healed. <laughs> and that's what happens when you have that. Okay, the other thing you'll often need is to be able to do manual rolls. And so you're going to want to use. I want to say it's a backslash, but I can never keep those straight. It's the one you see down there in the chat box. R space D20. It's our basic D20 wall. But we can start getting real fancy with it. So let's do a D20 plus 3. Or a 5D10 keep highest minus 3D8. Keep lowest plus two. And we can see there that we rolled 5d10, 3d8, and we kept the highest and we kept the lowest, and then we added two. So we have keep highest, keep lowest. We also have drop highest. So if we want to do the standard stat roll for d6, drop lowest. Or, of course, we can also do 
if you're just that unfortunate, 10d8 drop highest. Then there's also explosions. So exploding dice, or when you roll a specific number or a number within a range, it rolls again and again and again until it's not in that range and then adds them all up. So let's say we roll in 66 exploding on a five. And now if we look at this, we can see we did not roll any five, so only rolled six times. Roll 7d5, explode on a four. Computers can do that. Uh, we don't have any five side dice that I know of. And we can see there's one four, and so instead of the seven, it's going to have rolled eight. Now we can also do things in the range. So someone earlier today was asking about rolling a d20 and have an explode as long as it is greater than two. And so each time it rolled, it had to keep re-rolling until it came out greater than two. Wow. I think you hit. <laughs> so that's the bulk of what goes on in here. If we wanted to share our character art, we can either show artwork, which will do a pop like this, or we can show token, which will do a pop up like that. And that should go across to your fellow players as well. If we want to navigate to other maps, we simply click on the map. And the maps that I'm making, a lot of them have pre-placed sounds. So as we walk into this tavern, there's going to be sounds. As we walk closer to that file, the file gets louder. As we walk away from the file, the file fades out entirely. Or as we are crossing here, a bridge, we can hear the boards, Nasty Crow, and there we're starting to hear the river, and the river gets louder, hear a woodpecker. We can also see here that lighting, things can be hiding behind those trees because we have dynamic line going on here. That's the very basics of an introduction for the player. You do have, also in the maze section, there's this little flag thing. And the reason why this is going to be useful is as we are going around, we may encounter... Oh, you can click on doors and open them. I'm trying to remember where the... Ah, that one is locked. If we look at it, there's a book on it. If we double click on the book, it gives us a riddle and we're going to think about that riddle and type in a message into the chat or tell your game master however you want to do this and put three sixes together so it amounts to seven. Well, six plus six divided by six would do that. And then the game master could open the door and we could keep on going. So these also might be on a state map, bookmarking where cities are, or other things with there. There might be hyperlinks to other information for us to be exploring the world, even if the game master is not around to help us out. We have the combat tracker in here, and I'll get into that a little bit more in the game master's video. It will show you what order you're in, and it will also give you a die icon that allows you to click it. If you want to move it on your screen, you just right click and it pops up. You can pop out any of these except for the chat itself, which won't pop. So the player characters list. You won't do much here, but it is where it's going to show your character. And we can see some other things in here. The cave bear, the giant scorpion, the polar bear. And this is showing up because they're shared with players. Because these particular monsters are often used for um, wild... For certain spells as well as wild shape and stuff like that. So I have some of them showing, but most of them will be hidden. We, of course, went into the classes in here. We also have the background data, races, feats all very similarly stored and you just drag and drop onto your character sheet and here we have the entire 5e rules now this thing is going to be really impossible to navigate right now the hyperlinks here unfortunately create the hyperlink up here and that's not what we want <laughs> that just reloads it it doesn't actually open the dial for you <laughs> so we're working on that and those hyperlinks this code does go to the correct information inside of that. It's just a matter of getting it all tied together. Okay. 
and playlists. As a player, you're not going to do almost anything with that. We have the compendium in here, which like I said has the various player actors. If you're looking up a monster for a spell, you can open up the beast theory. And as a player, you'll only be able to see what the game master is choosing to share with you. Which we have a problem right now because these should not be shown. And we'll track down that later. It's still beta, so we're still running into some stuff like that. We have the spells you can open up in here, and there's also the scenes. And once again, you should not have access to the scenes. It won't do you much good right now because they're just maps, and you right click on them, does not give you the import button, so you can't add them up there. And good, this one is locked. This shows what modules are currently active. And you can see that it's demonstrating how to use the spell browser. Oh, I have the favorite tab shown. So I should do that. If you are a spellcaster and have lots of stuff all over the place, you might want to mark some of your things as favorites that you're going to be using most often. Because once we have these marked as favorites by clicking this little icon next to them, then they're all going to show up over here in a single place. Nice and easy to find. Let's throw in, that includes numbers of usage. So if we make this into a two of two, which I think is what you get at first level. We go over here, we can see that that carried over as well. So you can mark it off your spell slots as you use them. Okay. Um, inspiration, exhaustion, hit dice and healing. Okay, so let's assume temporarily that we are damaged. And you take a short rest. You click the short rest button. And it asks you what size is your hit die. And you're like, I don't remember. Well, go down to your class and click the edit button. And it'll pop up information. We can see here 1d12 per barbarian level. So we are a d12. And we can roll hit die. Public. And that modifier there is if there was a ball seen in a song of rest or something like that, we could have a situational thing going on. In this case, we rolled a 1, and then added our constitution, and our magically healed us. Let's roll, and you can see it marked off one of our hit die. Let's roll again. And we need a bit more than that. And of course, there we get a big one, and we waste some of that. But that's okay. Then, let's say we take a long rest. And you notice that it sticks a message into the chat whenever we're doing this. We have our rages marked up here, and we could stick a secondary resource in here as well. So if we actually were doing the very silly barbarian druid that someone's going to actually do and make awesome, just to prove me wrong on that, but to me it doesn't make sense. But anyway, if you were doing that, you could stick your wild shapes in the second box. Armor class. I think we've gone over essentially all of the core features you need to know as a player. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for playing with us. I'm super excited about how Foundry is coming together. It has a lot of amazing features. It's still in beta. It still has more to grow. And a lot of what I showed you is probably going to change and move around some still. Because, well, it's still in beta. But it has so much potential. And we're glad to have you with us. God bless you all and have a great day. Bye.